Craig from Fix It Bellows here and today I'm not really fixing anything I thought I'd just give you a little heads up and maybe consider this a review um, of some trainers so I run twice a week at most usually once a week so I'm not an uh, obsessive runner I don't train all I do is I go out and I run a 5k I run the same route every time I've been doing the same route for about eight years or so it's all tracked on, tra on Strava, so I've got a very good understanding of how quick I run. And I literally go out the front door, do a couple of stretches, and I run. I don't do intervals or anything. I just, really, I just run it as quick as I can. So I usually wear um, Nike trainers. I just get relatively cheap pairs. And in front of me here, I've got my last two pairs. So. These were the oldest pair. Um, I just buy kind of end of line yesteryear trainers. You know, nothing super flash about them. They was probably about 45 pounds. And then this is my most recent pair of Nikes. Again, similar sort of price point, 40, 45 pounds. No super duper soles or anything like that. I'll go out, I'll run a 5K, and typically I'll run a 5K between 22 and a half minutes and 24 minutes, depending on time of year and how I'm feeling on any given day. So as you can see, these trainers, you know, they bend pretty much. So what I thought I would do is see whether all the hype about these so-called super trainers, whether the hype is true or not. So these are Puma Deviate Elite carbon so there's a carbon plate through the sole they've got some mumbo jumbo technical material in the sole i won't bore you with all that all i can tell you is they are considerably stiffer and supposedly they give you a bit of spring um, they are were a bit more expensive than these i had to pay 119 pound for these in this color you can get them for as, uh, as low as 85 pounds in different color combinations so anyway, these were £119, so yeah, quite a bit more than I'd pay for my other type of trainers. And the most key thing I'd say is in Nikes, I always wear a UK7, which they claim is a Euro 41. In these, I've had to go half a size bigger. I've had to buy a seven and a half because the seven that I got was just too tight. Uh, and the other difference is Puma claim that a UK7 is a Euro 40.5, which Nike have never said. So anyway, I've bought, bought a seven and a half, and these are now a Euro 41, and they fit much better. Um, what I would say is you have to release all the laces in order to get your foot in there, because, because of the nature of the construction, this is quite a small opening for your foot to get in. So unlike my Nikes, which I could pretty much leave done up like that and just slip them on and off and that would be good enough for me. With these, I have found that I have to undo the laces right up, open, get your foot in and then pull the laces tight. Now these are straight out of the box. You can see I have not run in them at all. And my plan is to finish this little piece of the camera, strap these onto my feet, go for a run, look at me times and tell you whether they made me any quicker or not. Okay, so I'm just back from my run. I'm just having a little recovery. Get me breathing back under control. One thing I'd say at this point is I read a lot about the tongues moving and slipping. Had no trouble. Those tongues are in exactly the same position on my foot as when I put them on. I had no slippage at all. I think a lot of people are saying the tongue slips off to the side because they're not gusseted. But in my opinion, no drama. There was no slippage. They felt fine. Okay, so here we are. Here's my run uploaded onto Strava. And you can see it's just a little bit over 5K. So there's times I quote you are for like 3.2 miles. Um, so the route is the same that I've run so many times over the last eight years and I had a moving time of just over 23 minutes but more importantly what I look at is the average pace 7 minutes 11 
Now that is considerably quicker than I've run so far this year and typically at this time of year um, I run considerably slower than that. In fact looking back through all of my runs over the last eight years that's the quickest time average pace I've ever run during the month of February um, probably for March as well come to think of that and the reason I generally run a bit slower at this time of year is because uh, the bike doesn't come out because I'm a fair weather cyclist so I don't do much cycling or I don't do any cycling over November, December, January so that adds, adds to my fitness levels um, so you know it could be argued that these trainers have helped um, having run my fastest ever February slash March 5k or just over 5k time there so if we um, have a little look at my previous runs so we go matched runs and I zoom back through there you can see we go back all the way to January of 2014 and then you can see that the average pace is in the sort of mid to high sevens um, culminating in that run that I've just done of a 7 minute 11 pace which as you can see for the other run so far this year is quite a step up so my fastest pace was there previous pace was 7 minute 26 so you know it's not a huge sea change there's some argument it could be a placebo effect yeah i had these super duper trainers on my feet and i needed to prove them but equally so i'm the sort of person who don't like to uh sort of say that expensive things are better i like to prove that just running the mill things can be done so I, i'm not really sure i did run any harder than i might ordinarily do so at this point i'd say it's a positive thing for me um we'll get worth giving a try I'll do a few more runs and see what happens so there we are, my first run in my Puma DV8 Elites. Um, yeah, I quite enjoyed it actually. I run on uh, the front of my foot, on the balls of my foot, um, and I found that the carbon, stiff carbon sole, you know, it's very stiff, supported my foot like that. Uh, I do find that generally in my previous trainers, I would start the first half of my run on the, on the balls of my foot there, and then slowly, during the second half of the run as I started to get a little bit more fatigue um, I'd start to run more midfoot um, as not really having the strength to keep yourself up like that so much but maybe these helps me stay like that more possibly um, so all in all quite positive for me they were comfortable enough the back of the shoe kept uh, my foot in well enough one thing I would say is that the Puma logo comes down there and then it's printed onto the side of the phone and the print that's on the side of the phone there is after one run, so after 23 minutes, that print is starting to come away. Not a big deal for me, really not, because if that print weren't there, um, if that was just all yellow and grey, then well that Puma tick comes down there anyway. It really, really is of no concern to me. For other people, it might bother them. But I'm just pointing out that after 23 minutes of wear, that print has come away. So all in all, um, quite pleased. It's not like I've spent like um, Nike uh, Vaporfly money, you know, £230 or whatever on a pair of trainers. Um, yeah, for me, they're quite expensive, 119 but it's not like crazy, crazy, crazy money. So... Yeah, I'm feeling quite good about them. See how I get on. If I have any more feedback, I'll let you know. But overall, I'd say that I'm just a run-of-the-mill, bog-standard, go-out-for-a-run once a week sort of guy. And yeah, maybe it made a bit of difference. Anyway, thanks for watching. As ever, please be sure to give me the thumbs up, like, because it helps the algorithm. Please subscribe and be sure to receive notifications because I do put out a few videos. And talking of which, check out some of my other stuff. Um, as ever, thanks again. See you again soon.